Hi, I'm Liz Degnan and I work at the library over in Atlantic Highlands. I want to thank you for joining me in this presentation and we can get started. So this presentation is going to focus on how to help our readers build the skill and the love for reading. And what I'm really going to emphasize here is, is the love. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how reading happens in childhood. I'm going to talk about leisure reading, what it is, why it's important. And the crux of this presentation is really on ways that we can foster um, leisure reading in our kids. So in, if we think about reading in childhood, when their kids are young, books are selected with or for them. Um, as babies, we read to them. Um, we get the board books and those itty bitty skinny minis that get lost in the car. Um, and then this starts to change in elementary school. Um, they, they read with them and they learn to read and they kind of take ownership of their own reading. And generally by middle school, they're reading alone. Um, also in about first, second grade, they, in, when they get to school, they start to get assessed and their reading gets leveled and the focus of their reading becomes more reading skills and teaching them skills for reading. And research shows that by middle school, there's a decline in leisure reading. So what is leisure reading? And I put the definition here just so that we all can be on the same page, at least for this presentation. And leisure reading is independent, self-selected reading of a continuous text for a wide range of personal and social purposes. Otherwise, other terms could be recreational reading, pleasure reading, free reading, independent reading. It can happen in school, out of school, and it can happen in different formats. Um, it could read on their phone, read books, read magazines, um, you know, you name it. So really leisure reading is just reading for fun. The kind of reading you're not, you know, pulling out the highlighter, you're not using the post-its and, and things like that. So that's the kind of reading we're going to focus on for this presentation. And if we look at how much are our kids reading leisure reading? So we take a chart and the Pew, Research Center reports that teens have about five hours and 44 minutes that they spend on leisure activities. And this is during the school year, September to June. And a majority of that leisure time of that five hours, you could see, is spent on the screen. And then the rest is spent socializing. And then there's that chunk, that one hour and 27 minutes here on other leisure. And that's where our leisure reading falls. It falls in that chunk, that one hour and 27 minutes. So then we kind of get, want to get a better sense of, we know they're not spending that whole time reading. So if we look at the American Time Use Survey, for eight student people ages 15 to 24, so figure about high school, college age, they're spending about seven minutes reading for personal interest. Seven minutes. So far, I've talked for about three and a half minutes. <laughs> so that kind of gives it a context. Maybe your car ride is seven minutes. So it's really not that much time that they're spending on reading. So why is leisure reading important? Well, research shows that there are many academic benefits to leisure reading. So there's improved reading comprehension, improved achievement scores, and reduced academic stress. So basically, students who say that they read more, read for fun, just for the heck of it, tend to have higher scores and less stress. In addition, students who read research shows that they have expanded general knowledge and they have more are more empathetic. So that's why we're kind of looking to foster this leisure reading. And we know they have time. They have five minute hours and 44 minutes. <laughs> Okay, so here's where we get to the nuts and bolts of what we want to talk about. What are some ways that we can foster leisure reading? And again, this is really just about making reading fun, focusing on the fun of reading. So what are some things that you as parents can do? 
get books regularly. So what you can do, if possible, is maybe make a trip to the library or your local bookstore. Just make it part of your daily routine. Not daily, I'm sorry. <laughs> that would be great, but maybe bi-weekly or weekly is what's on what's near your regular routes. Um, right by the Trader Joe's, there's one of the main branches of the county library. So could you pop in um, to the library maybe for 10, 15 minutes while you're doing your grocery shop after you do your grocery shopping? Um, there's another, there's two libraries and a local bookstore en route to the YMCA and by the practice fields. So maybe you can stop, um, before or after practice, make that part of your routine. Maybe Saturday mornings, um, head down uh, after coffee, um, by the first cup and grab a cup of coffee and pop in for a book, make that part of a, a routine. Another thing you might want to consider is exploring different formats. Okay, so maybe um, maybe books might that might be really too time consuming for you to do, but maybe audiobooks um, work better for you. Um, we do have um, audio audiobooks at the library, but maybe Audible. Um, you could listen. You guys could listen together in the car. Um, listen and then compare notes maybe. Um, there's also graphic novels. Um, what a great way to blend visuals and fun and text. Um, and blogs too. That might be a, a different, that might work better for you. So, so expand. I mean, we have technology has given us more information and what's out there. See what can work for you. Read with your child or alongside of them. So there are books that you can get that you can read with them. Um, and it could be a, a book that they're reading to kind of get a sense of where their head is at, where their minds are at. Or it could be a book that's in both adult format and juvenile format. Trevor Noah's autobiography, Born a Crime, is one such example of a book that he has an adult version and a children's version, and you can each read them and talk about it. And a, a great a great idea is really pairing books and videos. Um, you can do oh my gosh one of the, any of the classics Cinderella, Hansel and Gretel, the Marvels, um, superheroes, holiday stories, um, Christmas Carol, Flipped, The Outsiders. Um, Judy Bloom is supposedly coming out with. Um, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Yay. <laughs> um, so that's an option, uh, something you could do as well. And lastly, a last option um, for this presentation anyway is poetry. You just pull out your phones or your tablets and just type in poets.org. And just click on that and you'll see, boom, you've got poetry and maybe you could give your child the phone if, the, if he or she can read um, in the car or read out loud or you can this has um, you can play this is Osalcada reading you wrote me. so you know those are that's another option um, something you could do so types of books what are some types of books that your child should be reading? Really anything they want. <laughs> Let them go. Do you want Captain Underpants? Go for it. Do you want a fairy book? Yes. <laughs> um, really anything that's going to get them excited. Um, and and it, encourage them to do that. I know that um, so many parents think, well, my son or daughter is this level. What are books that are that level? And that's that's, you know, you could do that, but some, let it go for now. Try it. Try just letting them read. And if it's under level, so what? If it's over level, nah, if, if they can't do it, they'll stop. So let them pick and then be their guide. Just kind of help guide them along. If they're not sure what they want to read, so you're, you know, you're saying, okay, let's get some reading material. And they're like, I don't know what I want. And I get this all the time. <laughs> Um, one thing you can do is ask a librarian, ask somebody at the library. Kids like to know what other people are reading. I think we can all, um, we all know how, how moms and dads and caregivers are, you know, lose all their brain cells. So maybe a coach or a favorite teacher 
or a friend um, or older sibling or, you know, family, another family friend, ask around, what are people reading? And um, that can help. Also talk to your child about what you're reading. Uh, you know, I like this, maybe, and maybe they'll say, oh, I'd like something like that or on that topic. So that could be a good way. People are a good way to get ideas. Also, the library has um, read a -like. so if you're kind of looking for ideas, we do have a database tool, and I'm going to play this video clip for you now, give you a little talk through. It's Novelist Kid A+. Hi, so for this part of the presentation, I just want to give you a quick tour of Novelist Kid A+. So if you're looking for books for your child and you, know, you don't really know what to get, this is a good tool that's available to you. So I'm at the Monmouth County Library website. And I go to the data research databases and you'll see it's right here. So I'm going to click on login. I would need my library card number, key that in and sign in. And this is the screen that you're going to see. And the home page, you can see that it's broken down teens, ages nine to 12, ages zero to eight and fiction and nonfiction. So it's a good starting point. And if you, you know, you just think like, oh, maybe the best of is a good, a good list to start you can see on um, that list and it pops up. Okay, so this is just one tool that's available to you. The other feature that I wanted to highlight through Novelist is um, the read-alike. So if there's a book that your child likes or that you liked and you maybe want to get different books um, to recommend for him or her, you can go to this top, switch it to title, and I'm just going to take um, there. God, it's me, Margaret. Judy Bloom is a it's fun classic. So here's the book, and then if you look over to the right, you see read-alikes. So um, that's another way that you can get ideas for, for books or material to, for your child to read. And this tool is also avail available for you as an adult. So you would just go to the Novelist Plus. All right? So we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, so that's an option. And then lastly, um, you can also use your regular newspaper. I know many, many people here read the New York Times and they have, um, you know, their best selling books and check it out. So your kid's like, I'm not sure what I want to read. Oh, let's take a look, you know, here, get some ideas here. Oh, I also have this list of websites here for you to explore. Um, let's take a look at Kirkus. And so you just go to this website and, <clears throat> excuse me, take a look at children's books and boom. So you've got a whole bunch of ideas to explore and, you know, just see and, and, and try it. And, you know, they can get it and if they don't like it, they don't have to finish it, right? <laughs> so that's an idea for you. And, and, and I'll have these out for you um, and I will also post them on the website so that you can click on these as needed. So again, just to sum up, our goal is to kind of, is to encourage our children to read, to read for fun, to just read because it's good for them. <laughs> and um, so there, these are some ideas to get you guys all started. I hope it's helpful. We are around. Um, thank you for letting me talk. Uh, Dr. Borman, I thank you. And um, I look forward to meeting all of you soon. Have a good night.